you figure how to save the tidly spot pattern? Uh, I think so. He showed me how to download it to save it as a tidly spot and then bring it from Chrome into Firefox. So you could open it. Yep. Yeah. <coughs> and you can save it. Yeah. And you put your password in and all those things. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what happens if you forget your password. You forget it, then you gotta redo a whole new one. So I have like 50 of them. <laughs> you, you can't, there's no recovery? I haven't found one. I'm okay. sure there is somewhere. Yeah, I'm not sure there is. I mean, there might not be. There didn't used to be a Tiddly Space, which was sort of like a Tiddly Spot before the end. Um, so, what do you need to know? Well, I fell behind fairly quickly. I'm still working on Week 8. Well, I just started Week 8 because okay. yeah. I lost everything. Everything? Yeah, my computer fried. The graphs card melted, so I like the only things that I had in my Dropbox were up to like week six, week six in the midterm. And then after that, Wait, your Dropbox wasn't sinking. No, my drop it was, but it. I mean, I only well, had I only had like two a day, right. okay. like eight and nine in there. So. Yeah. Um. So. Okay. Um. Are you have you looked at the the the, the exercises sort of build on each other, but maybe not. So what you, you might want to do is go through if you're behind is go through and. And look at the previous exercises and look at the current ones and say, okay, I'm going to combine them all and I'm going to bring all the skills together and I'm just going to do it in one and then I'll do the next one. So that's fine. I don't, you know, I just want to see that you sort of are understanding it. Yeah, that you get the point. Okay. If anybody's interested, I'm doing a Zoom session tonight with a couple of students to help me get caught up. Okay. Nobody needs help. Cool. At seven. What's tonight? Yep. Tonight what students? Seven. Um, that one, one other one. Good. Good. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, hey, that's not Hagar, that's Cassandra's came in. All right. Um, I think it's the first time we've had everyone in the class. Yeah. I, you know, I like, it's a kind of a, it's an odd thing. If, when I do this again, and I will, it'll be different. And I will start asking you how I should have done it differently. So it be, but, I don't know because I've never done something like this. Yeah, well, neither have I. I mean, sort of a combination <laughs> of an online, offline, in class, not in class, open. I mean, it's a, and then with a piece of software that's the teaching, teaching, using a piece of software to teach a big concept without being, without saying this is just a typical wiki class because it's not. You know, I'm hoping that the concepts are applicable outside of typical wiki. If not, then that's not good. And so I'm kind of curious to make sure, or I want you to think about that. To what extent <coughs> does this way of thinking, you know, like, <coughs> did learning all of this code stuff help you understand the broader concepts, and can you apply those concepts elsewhere? That's really good. If not, then I need to rethink it. And I might say, well, I should just call it to be 101, to be 201, 301. Let's make it to the weekly class. But it's not, it's a class in designing and writing in the taxes. So, um, um, the fact that we're still, clearly there's work to be done at some level, we're still saving files and figuring that out. But on the other hand, I'm okay with that too because the other part of the class was we're part of a community. So, what does it mean to learn to use a piece of software that nobody knows how to use? It's not like I have all this specialized knowledge and I'm going to give it to you piece by piece is that we're going to discover it together. And you're supposed to learn how to work in an open source community, which is also hard. Um, so, so we'll see. I mean, that's why the fact that you're doing Zoom sessions is really cool because it tells me that there's a sense of self-organizing in the community. You know, I call it the design right community. So this is the first of my, um, attempts to see if my concept of a classroom as a conversation would work. So I'm thinking that design writing is an ongoing conversation. So right, probably not, but maybe one of you will say, hey, this is cool, I'm gonna stick and do more of it and come back and do more. So maybe you can continue, can continue to be a part of the community in future semesters, even if not necessarily taking class. Or if you decide you really want to do something used to the week as a platform, you do an independent study. Um, and then you have the class as a support method, <clears throat> and then you interact with the students who are in the class next year. If there are, you know, unless the rate my professor numbers are so bad. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. 
that's not to do it. Says to be back to them. Anyway, um, so so that's sort of where we're. I, I want to you to start thinking about those kinds of things. Um, so for this morning, I wanted to, um, as always, see if there's anything in particular um, that any of you want to bring. In a, and then I want to um, at ten o'clock, Jeremy will talk, join us, and we're going to talk about tags, tagging. And the difference between the tagged command and the tagging command and references and lists and all of the ways that we use tags to make things relate to each other. Um, so if we, we can start that if somebody's got stuff to consider. Well, you have those stuff to consider. I have a lot of stuff to consider, but if it's I just pretty much catch up, I'll just watch the videos and okay. do some with them. Yeah, okay. Um, tell me. Remind me about like what kind of <coughs> you a graphic artist, you a computer gamer, I'm a, a technical I'm, writer. I'm a graphic artist. I, I play a lot of video games, but I'm going to be um, mainly doing like design work, or design um, illustration track with a like logo and design. Okay. Brand or advertising. Okay. Um, uh, there's this little project that keeps coming back in my mind. I think this time you were in. Were you in the class when we were doing the SUNY Poly logo stuff and we were doing the, were you in one of my classes where we had the interactive graphics floating around where you could set, do you know what I'm talking about? Where, it's, it was reminding me of generative design. Yeah, the gen, it, right, we did some generative design work in one class. Um, you, I don't think you were in that. There was a, um, I hadn't thought of that until you, until you mentioned that, but I wonder if there's a way that I can connect your graphics work to this generative design and maybe you can figure out ways to use TiddlyWiki or the concepts of hypertext to generate design. Can I just throw in one thought? Yeah. If you're going to go into graphic design stuff like that, you got to learn the in and outs of designing for digital, not just print. So yeah, I'll have a basic code knowledge. Because <laughs> that's what I do for a living. What do you mean designing for print versus designing for digital? Um, Web-based design versus printed material like um, posters. No, I understand that, that, but like. Because when you do print, you have to go with CMYK for the color. Right. When you do digital, you gotta go with RGB. Okay, we learned that on day yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> and they can't be crossed <laughs> with each other. <laughs> I'm not, I don't, I don't That's like the first thing they teach you in three. And you have to know the sizes. You go in 320. 320. Yeah. You gotta know the sizes that you're designing. Right, so it's like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's I didn't know so. Yeah, so it's the idea that it's 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 not it's of where your stuff is gonna end up. If it's gonna end up being translated into ink and paper. This path is going to end up always being rendered as bits on screens. It's this path. And changes are you're going to get a client that wants both, and you have to sit there, sit there and explain to them very slowly and carefully. You cannot do both with the same design. It can be the same design concept, but they will never look alike. When you do digital and print, they won't look the same because the aspect ratios, the color schemes. I'm all digital. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but it's it, it is fair it is interesting because there is a um um there's still a market for print and I think there will be. I know you're a huge market. Yeah, you're I was you're, surprised. You're totally you're kind of really into you know this notion that there's that print still exists. It really does, so you make a killing off it too. <coughs> It's highly profitable. Oh right? yeah, yeah. Because I mean, you're thinking it's expensive, but it's not. I mean, for photos, for me to print a thirteen by nineteen cost me a dollar. I sell them for thirty dollars, and that's cheap. Well, it costs you a dollar to make supplies. Yeah, you're not advertising your costs. You have to really. I mean, if you really, I mean, well, I'm if like, I had employees, it'd be different. But it's just me. Well, yeah, but you still have electricity. Yeah, not much. They don't use much. <laughs> you you still have the you have to advertise the cost of the printer. It's got a lifetime. Yep. Right. The printer's gonna gonna make ten thousand prints. So you have to divide the cost of your what's it two hundred thousand? 
No, it's like six grand. Yeah. I know. That's what it's like. Six thousand dollar printer by ten thousand prints. Yep. And put that in plus the cost of the So it's like there are some there's, there's some costs. more, but but yeah, okay. So it's not thirty profit, maybe it costs you two dollars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so but the um To the extent that print exists for like <coughs> and organizing prints, you could still see, you might see that, that the framework that allows you to organize your materials ahead of printing might be helpful. That's what I'm trying to say. Is to see if we can have any relevance to the print world. Well, and I think it does. I've noticed with the print world, they're getting more and more away from printing books and just going with quick prints like posters, handouts. Well. Because people are so used you know, to not jumping maybe, around. You know, maybe it would be an interesting topics class in CID to actually say, like, what's the status of print? You cover a lot through 20, right? The, and, does, and the Medici courses and graphic design, are those all folk and are those all print based? We always do both. Yeah. Oh, so he always covers it. Yeah. But it doesn't talk about strategically what's the role of print in the digital. No, I mean, you can see that newspapers are starting to fail. Magazines. Starting to fail? Newspapers are dead. They're not dead completely. There's still some of them hanging around. They're dead, they just don't know it yet. There's magazines what now. They say they're dead, but they forgot to light in. Magazines are <laughs> what you call dead. Newspapers money. Magazines, there's... It's, yeah. it's quick print stuff now. It, it's, pr it's quick print and it's distributed print. Okay, so it's... And it's, um... So, from a... Strategic, this is way off to the wiki topic in interactive text topic, but from a strategic perspective, I try to, like in an organization, like here, I try to get organizations, people, students, and secretaries in the College of Arts and Sciences to recognize the digital thing as the thing they have to keep up with, <coughs> and the paper, the print version, as disposable. So to me, print is disposable. It's not the, you, you print it, look at it, throw it away, recycle. Print it, look at it, recycle it. You don't have anything that's like of archival value only in print. You're not attached to it. Or in print. Hmm? So you're not really attached to it. It's transient, yeah. which is totally from, you guys have had 380, right? And 380, I think you probably talked about digital. No, digital. Mm -hmm. Ryan's class. Theory, Ryan's class. Maybe he doesn't cover. I used to call oh, it three when I talked about oh, theory of digital media. Three, yeah. Digital, we used to think about digital media as transient, and not permanent, <clears throat> and not existent. I'm saying, no, no, no. It's the print that's transient and doesn't have permanent values. See how that flips? Do you disagree with that? Why is that? Because well, it doesn't seem that way to me. Digital things can change. Oh, you yeah, always have a copy of a digital thing. If you have a, yeah, you can, but when they keep changing. So there's a there's a sense of digital, and it, this comes, of course, right back to the wiki that always does, right? There's a sense of the wiki of what is, and this that has to do with that state variable. Like, what is the current <coughs> state of the Tiddly wiki? Okay, and, and because it's an HTML file, and you can change it. Like when you type your password in your subtitle and all of a sudden the underlying HTML file changes. Well, where is that changed version sitting? Where is that? How could you um, take this wiki thing, which is very dynamic, and make it permanent in a sense to print it? Not print it in a reduce it to physical form, but reduce it to static form. And there's a way in, in, in the wiki to save in a static <coughs> HTML site. Okay, so that you no longer change it, it's print. You know, and, and so it's print in the sense of, for my, I don't know, you guys in the Mac world, when you go print, save this PDF. In what universe is that called printed? You know, and so it's like, how's that printing? And do, you have, do you have a Mac? So does it work the same way in Windows? You can go file, in yeah. Mac, you go file, print, PDF. save this PDF. Yep. But it's, so and I, it's, so it's called printing, but where's that, how's that printing? It's really the process of making permanent. So if, when I was talking about the digital resources, I think the thing that's permanent and valuable should be the digital version of it, not the thing that's been rendered on paper. 
And this is very difficult in organizations and people's lives. So like in the College of Arts and Sciences, I've been having this running battle for, I don't know, 10, 15 years. Um, you guys hand in petitions or something to change stuff. And, and it's like, I don't, I, I, I don't, I haven't taken paper from students since, <coughs> I think, 94, 96. I, don't, I think that's the last time I accepted a piece of paper from a student as an assignment. I'm going to. I want to push people into this, and, and, and you know what they do with our with your petitions, our academic records. So you go out a petition for something, you have to do this for something soon. I can't remember what, right? How you probably had to do petitions, right? To just like I've never actually had to do a petition. Well, never, never did an independent study. Well, whatever, if you ever do, it's a piece of paper, right? You get. It, to me, it's a PDF. I sign it on the PDF. It gets the registrar prints it out on a piece of paper, puts it in a physical file that has your name on it. Oh, freeze! And when you graduate, they take that file and run it through a machine that makes a PDF of your file and then throw your paper away. <laughs> so if that's <coughs> so, it's like if they things, it, hmm? as soon as they get it, do what? Shouldn't they just do it as soon as they get it, so they don't have to worry about taking that extra step of filing? Do what? As soon as they, they combine as soon as they receive it, instead of printing it out and putting it just as soon as they receive the petition, they should do what? Save it wherever they save the other ones. They want a repository where, in ten years or five years or twenty minutes, sometime in the future, I can look at Tyler Hunter's file. What are they lacking? Is they're lacking the ability to save that? Individual document. If they had Tizzywiki, they could bring the document into Tizzywiki and tag it to Tyler Humphrey and tag it to the date, so that we could assemble Tyler's file on the fly out of all of these separate objects. But no, they they they're locked into a system where they have a PDF called TylerHumphrey.pdf um, because of organizational constraints. Like, so what would drive an organization to have such a crazy system? Confidentiality. Yeah, maybe. It's kind of important lack of imagination. <laughs> um, <coughs> and actually, it's sort of there's a need to purge after so many years of the files because we can only retain records, and it's really easy to just get rid of your file. You're gone. You shredded it. Whereas if it's in a database, it's hard to shred records. Google has that trouble. Google can't get rid of stuff. The Internet Archive, they can't get rid of stuff. They can. Um, the Internet Archive is this thing that has this massive collection of web pages that they've saved and they don't have any permission to save them. And most people are perfectly fine, but some places say, no, I don't want my stuff in your archive. And, and they have what they call a takedown of it. And what they do, they don't take it out of their files, they just break them into it. So they still have the data in their archive that anybody else, if you have the special keys, you can see it, but they just make it so the public can't see it. Because they don't actually have the capacity to go in and find all this. I mean, they do. It would be really expensive to find all the pieces. So, um, so it would be interesting to see how Tiddly Week could be used to sort of get you into the graphics world a little bit. That's where I went off on that. Um, so, if you're, would that be of interest or not? Just like, are you going to build websites in your life? I plan on. I plan to because that's where everything is headed. Is no. Well, I That's say, where they used to um, be ten years ago. Yeah, build websites, build apps. Okay, not websites. So you want to build stuff? I do want to build stuff, but it's not going to be what I'm going to be all about. I'm going to be about the design aspect rather than the coding aspect of it. I want to design the attribute design for the coders. No, no, no. What do you mean by yeah, design? Like the CSS version of it instead of the HTML code. The presentation layer. Yes. Um, do you know CSS? I do. Well, why don't you just hack all CSS? So much work. More than in other places they've done CSS? More than required of the tiddly we get, rather than more than I've done in other places. Wait, um, <coughs> you've lost. The code is already there for tiddly we get. And instead of doing my own code to make it the way I want to look, <coughs> I'll just stick to what they already presented. Because I'm 
I'm fine with the way that it looks now. So there's no point in me doing my own thing if it's already done for me. But I thought that's what you wanted to do. That's what I do. That's what I want to do. But it's not necessary for me to actually do it in this because you're not asking that of us. You're just asking us to do No, I'm asking you to do something. Yeah. And I'm suggesting that you could do that instead of something that you find maybe less relevant. But I'd rather learn stuff now so okay. I'm still in Got school it. rather than. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. Okay. Okay. I'm a little slow on the object. Okay. Um, Paul, how's your project? Complicated. <laughs> in what way? Just a lot of data. So where are you on this? Trying to figure out how I could put. Um, did I miss your update that you posted? I did. Probably not. Yeah. So Tyler, you're driving. Go to design right. Yeah, and then in the um, in the new design right, the week beginning April first, which I should just edit next week. Can you share your screen? Oh yeah. And um, so review submissions and critiques. And um, so you needed to submit something on your project there. Okay. Okay. So I've got, well, I'm, not, I'm like a week behind, right? Is it the eighth today? Sixth. The sixth. I'm only six days behind. But I'm catching up. So I've got a couple more to look at. Now um, for this stuff, this stuff, like, this can be like all the like all the stuff, like the guide development stuff and the semester project. So like yeah, that. you can put everything in here. It's the only one I know look at. Okay. So whatever you've got. And then um, Yeah, this is this is mine. You don't actually submit to this form. Yeah, there's the, the thing about Yeah, it. the thing about it that's and so put stuff in there. So then uh, and I if I had thought of this like this is one of the things I've learned during the semester is that the good way to have done this is this. <laughs> and so oh well. Um, so go back to design rate. Um, so you want to put yours in there, yep. and then um, have you are you have you worked on it? Do you have a do you have a data? Do you have any I'm doing, specific? I'm doing it in sheets. Pardon? I want to do it in sheets. Have you started it or just trying to? Uh, um, I have like you know I have the empty ready. The empty ready. Did you look at this? Um, the, my last exercise, which was a kind of a big well, sheets we exercise. Last week? Hmm? Is that the one we did last week? Or the week no, before that? I think the share templating exercise. That's yeah, my project that's responsive. So I actually did my homework here, but then go to my tiddly spot version, which works better. Um, and so I don't know if you saw this. Click on start. Here. Oh, right here. You have to actually follow these instructions. So this is a good way, by the way, to lay out a project. Like, hello, and maybe read them. You know, so this tells me what it is. Da, 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 da. There's some updates to it, and then there's some instructions. Make sure that this is set to zoom in. So click that, and hopefully, yeah, click that and set to zoom in. Good. So you can close that now. Um, I'll make out here. All that. Yeah. Um, don't close yet. There you go. Close the tiddler, not the we. Uh, okay, so now I have to go back to design right here. <laughs> Let's do that again. Uh, no, 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 no. Right there, go to Tiddly Spot. The Tiddly Spot, the Tiddly Spot, here, there, good. Okay, and then do the start here. So this is somewhat like yours um, in that this is, this is my attempt to allow you to navigate um, in three dimensions. So I picked Grammy Award winners, whatever, that's the data to right? Um, and so there's there's the genre, the type of award in the year. Mm. And so you can navigate to, so click on folk, and now we're at folk album 213, and click on pop, and we'll be at pop album 213. So this isn't the best interface, but it kind of works and allows you to navigate. So what it's doing is it's holding one of those three things constant, or two of those three things constant, allowing you to select the third value. So where else do you, have you ever seen this navigation? Because I can't imagine that I'm the only one who's ever thought of navigating this way, but where else do you 
navigate by holding one, most things constant in bearing one dimension. Amazon? I don't know. It's not like a term. I don't know. So, um, so that's a that's a logic of navigation. Okay, maybe it's not very interesting, but it's not interesting because I tried to use it the other day. And I was so confused. You were okay. <coughs> you were confused and by the like, videos kept playing in the background when I was going into new things. I was like, I have no idea what's going on. Oh, uh, the videos. You know, I just threw the videos in there for the hell of it. I they didn't. <coughs> I should have probably not put the videos in there. Um, the weird thing is that they're not real videos. I mean, they're real videos on YouTube, but they're just queer responses. You didn't get that at all, right? Um, edit this tiddler. So this tiddler was built from a spreadsheet. Um, it's got a title. It's got no text, so there's nothing in there, right? And then. The fields in the spreadsheet, this is what you're working on in right. your spreadsheet. So the field is like, what's the award? Right. Well, it's an album. And then no. okay. this is where I wrote filters in a spreadsheet and put them in a tiddler. So why would you do that? This is sort of what you were talking about before, is what you wanted, you wanted to learn. Like, why, why would you need to do that? Because you're designing how people are going to move from object to object. So what what... What does what does this filter do? You can look on your own screen. What does that filter do? You can go to tag the album, tag the X twenty thirteen, but not tag the pop. So it lists all of the tiddlers that share these tags. There's probably a way to do that in code, but I couldn't figure it out. Okay, so I decided instead I'm just going to write the filters every. Every Hitler has a different <coughs> has a different um, set of filters. So if this were jazz album two thirteen, what would the value of filter one be? Um, Instead of pop, it would say jazz. Okay. So 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 that's filter one, and then I also put in the genre and the project I don't actually use, and the year is the same as the award, and then look at this YouTube query, grab that. Um, click on YouTube query and select it. So just copy it and then put it in the text version in the text field so we can see what it does. Okay. Um, so talk about cheesy content. I just ran a YouTube query with my tags and I figured out, I poked around. I didn't know that you could write a URL that's a YouTube query. So every tiddler has a different query. Is that going to be the Pop album 213 Grammy Award winner? Maybe. Uh, okay. Do I care? No. <laughs> <laughs> because I just wanted to have something up there so it didn't look so boring. And so I said, oh, well, yeah, I'm just, and, and I wanted to learn how to run a query. So if you think about this, when you come back to this, it's going to be different. Like when you're looking at it, when I'm looking at it, it's actually going to, the week is going to be different for each of us because YouTube is responsive to me and to you. It's going to return something slightly different. So it's really kind of weird. This is a super hypertext if you think about it, right? So I've built in variability. So yeah, and that maybe that confused people. Um, but I, I, was, I couldn't figure out how to, how to I didn't want, I was too lazy to find 64 videos or 64 pictures and save them. You have to do that because we actually right. care about your content, right? And I'm lazy. Luckily, everything's on Facebook. Yeah. Um, um, so can I just link? The images to the Facebook link instead of downloading them. Because <coughs> Facebook links are probably good for the images. Could I? Instead of downloading it, I just link downloading. the images to the Facebook link. I don't know what you mean. You'd have to show me. So, like the images. The, Facebook, the images are posted on Facebook. They're on Facebook. And could you embed them? Yeah. Yeah, does Facebook allow you to embed? Does it? Yeah. It's a public page. There's no privacy settings. It's not, about it's not like on my personal. It's, it's not, not about privacy. Does Facebook have the facility that allows you to embed a photo? You could get the link for it. You could get the source link. I don't know. I know you can. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, do they do they provide that or is it like the yeah, back door? Right click. Right click, get the image. But it doesn't mean that they'll let you serve. I mean, I know you can get the image. Does it serve when you put that in the web page? It should. 
No, try you it. shouldn't. You know, because if you go to YouTube, try it out. Yeah, you can't do that in oh, YouTube, for example, because YouTube says, no, we're not letting some, you. Some videos you can, so, but a lot of them. It depends on, yeah, it, it, it's a, but so anyway. <coughs> uh, so, so close this um, with the X so that we don't save it. Um, and yeah, discard the changes. Yeah. Um, so what this, post. the other um, navigation is, is along the tags. So if you click on album, um, this allows you to navigate to any of the titlers um, that are tagged with album, I think. What order are they presented here? Genre? Uh, probably not. Yes, it's folk, jazz, and pop, rock. Probably by title, titular title. The fact that they're all Grammy Award winners <coughs> in oh, space yeah. is the same, so the first thing that differs happens to be genre, but it's not sorted by genre. It's probably sorted by titular title, I think. Pardon? Alphabetical? Oh, yeah, it is. Let's just say it's sorted by tidbit title. Alphabetical, when you say alphabetical, in your mind you're thinking A to Z, lowercase, A to Z, uppercase, those are the only alphabetical. But there's all the rest of the characters. Like in an alphabetical sort, where would you put the um, plus sign? After the uh, zero? It would go plus minus. <coughs> I don't know what the sort is. So it's an alphanumeric sort. Probably Linux version. Oh, God. Probably. I think where Linux version sorts um, one zero one 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 two one one zero two or something like that. Their sorting is different than normal humans would sort it. <coughs> I can't remember exactly. So, but you want to understand. So everything is sorted, and there's a default sort. But just because it's sorted by default doesn't mean it's not sorted. So as a designer, if you want to allow people to go to the next thing, you have to know what the next is. Um, and if you can't figure it out here, that's fine. Just say it's going to the next thing, whatever that is. But at least it acknowledges that in your mind, you know, there's a, um, a um, there is a next button applied. So come off of that and just, so what if I wanted to go to the next album with How would I do that? Is that enough? That's a totally different kind of navigation, right? So, <coughs> um, and I think that's closer to James's navigation, right? He's navigating to first, previous, next, and last within a tag. And what I'm doing here is navigating to tiddlers that are similar but sort of orthogonal to this one. Those are two very different navigational paths. Um, I'm not sh the first previous next last we're pretty used to. Like so if you go to Amazon and you <coughs> can you ever go to Amazon? Um, and let's shop for um, books on hypertext. And um, so click one, the first one, that's pretty cool. Um, just as a pitch for those of you who are still going to be students next year, there's a graduate course on digital literature offered in the fall, which is neat. So if you want to take it. Um, if I go to, um, where's the next? Oh, Amazon doesn't really do next. Um, it does recommendations based on. Yeah, search do for next um, the main one. Yeah, instead of books, search for a computer or a laptop or something, whatever. Yeah, and, yeah. And there we go. This is what I was looking for, right? So, um, you. This is so bad. Yeah, go back, go back, go back. It's like eighty bucks for a piece of garbage. Yeah, go back. Okay, so here these are placed in an order. These are like titlers, right? That are placed in some order that you don't really see. But if you want to sort it, scroll up. It allows you to refine by, where's the sort button? Sort by up here, the upper right, sort by, sort by, sort by, yeah, do that. Sort, sort by customer review. 
So we could build that concept of sort <laughs> by into to the week. So the capability is there. And what I want you to see is not necessarily learn to do the code, although you can, and that would be great, but, but to have the idea that, hey, I can do this. Okay. And it's pretty straightforward to do it. Amazon spent a lot of money to make that work because their thing has a lot of objects in it, a lot of tiddlers. We are using TiddlyWiki sort of as a prototyper, and I want you to have the idea, hey, I could sort by that, so I'll do it. I just want you to realize that you can do that. Okay, so we go back to, 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 the, um, to the wiki, and the, I think it's the third one, the third tab, it's about there you go. Um, and so I was suggesting there's two different, two radically kinds of navig different kinds of navigation. I'm working on the next, and I can't quite get it to work, because it's sort of hard. So when I do, I'll, I'll read these things. Um, this, was, this took a long time to understand at some level. Um, so if you hit home, and, um, and click on my templating while creating interactive. So in this exercise, this is my sort of essay on what is it to template while creating an interactive. So what I was doing is creating an interactive for an audience that wanted to learn about grammar or word literature or something, right? It doesn't matter. Um, so if you scroll to the top of that, um, and I have, I don't necessarily think that you're gonna have math in yours, but you're welcome to. So I wanted to describe what I was doing so that I could generalize it. Okay, so does that make any sense? So tell me about that section in design. Does that make any sense? Okay, so yeah, kind of, I kind of understand it because I used to use um, uh, Excel a lot for like back at MB in high school, and I understand the values of the the equations for Excel, so mm -hmm. they do make sense. But after that, it's just kind of what's going on. So, Paul, what's your project? Describe your project the way that I described mine in that design section. <laughs> I've stumped him. He's thinking. How long can I sit here without saying anything, think and think and think, before he'll give up well, and rescue me? Or can, well, <coughs> could, could we go for 45 minutes? Because what time is the class over? Uh, two minutes. Yeah. Well, you could do, I've only got to stop. I mean, it could be similar, like yeah. genre, right? Music, whether they're okay. band, whether they're so comedian. what are your objects? What are your objects? Like my... The name, the date. Time so no, hard. those are not objects. What are your objects? What are your tiddlers? What are your, um, what are your Grammy Award winner jazz album 213? What's your, this is an object. Right. That's my object. What are your objects? So mine would probably be the performance and the date. No, no, what's the object? It's, it's a performance. Right, okay. Right? So how many performances are there going to be? 64. Yeah, sure. Okay. So you're over here, 64 objects or right. performances. Now, how are you going to describe those performances? What are the dimensions you're going to use to describe those performances? You told me one, date, date, genre, genre, or band name, name, just three. Audience size, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, let's say three dimensions, date, band name, and genre, right? What are the values? On those dimensions, what are the different dates that you're going to have? Let's say you just do year. So, what okay. years are you doing? 14, 15, and 16. Okay. What are the genres? Comedy, illusion, variety, music, spoken word. Five. Okay. And what's the other one? The name of the band? Yeah. There's like zillion. Okay. That's right. So, if some you repeat want, those. Hmm? Some do repeat. Yeah. So. So maybe band name isn't really a good dimension because you can't have values. So let's say um, venue. What are the different venues? They're all going to say student center multi-purpose. Okay, so that's not going to happen. <laughs> um, audience size, you got that? <laughs> Small, medium, and large. Um, I could give you an exact number. Let's no, we don't want exact numbers. <laughs> Small, medium, large, and really big. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, so you would have... If each of your dimensions, year, you've got, let's say you had four years, 
sides, you've got four sizes. Genre, you've got four genres, right? Yeah. So you would have I equals four values on each of J equals three dimensions. So how many tiddlers would you need to cover every possible combination? Well, four values. No, it's four values on each of three dimensions, <laughs> four to the power of three, or four cubed, four times four times four, 64 objects. So those 64 objects makes the perfect set. Um, now, yours isn't necessarily aimed at a perfect set of objects. Okay, but if you wanted to, that would help you understand like, how many are you going to have, um, and then you wanted to create navigation to each of those objects. So that's where that's where that's where this is sort of headed. Um, what would I ever do with that? What is this? Jeremy? Let me know if Jeremy shows up. Did he show up? No. Okay. What would I ever do with this? Like, why would we create such a thing like this? Well, I know for me, I want to create it so that my members in the future can see the last time the person was here, how the audience, you know, how the turnout was. Audience. Yeah, so you're looking to create a sort of repository of report. Right. Um, go back to my, um, to my uh, record, Grammy Award winner. This one wants to go away. Um, just pick, yeah. Start here, yeah. So I wanted to create a, an app, like a music app, like a playlist thing, um, of these 64 songs that won Grammy Awards in these shows. And I wanted people to be able to play their song and go to any one of the other 64 in sort of an ordered way. They wanted to go through all through genre, they wanted to go all by year. It's multi sequential navigation. That was one of our exercises. So, so, this is heading towards that. So, if you wanted to build something like that as opposed to a different. <coughs> so, your exercises are you do just do things sort of like this and follow the, follow the directions, I guess. I still want to see if you can do some graphic work. I think you can do it. Yeah, keep that open. We'll look at. Um... Wait, go back to my uh, critique. Yeah. Yeah, let's look at some of these there. Let's look at Kim's excision. Down one. Oh, that's Kim's. We already did Kim's. Monday. Oh, he did money. Yeah, so go back to yeah. I already looked at Gus. Yeah, I thought I looked at that. Look at Adrian's excision. I haven't looked at Adrian's yet. You're not sharing this. What the hell is an excision? Well, I think I've gotten to something. <laughs> what the hell's an excision? Um, I thought it was like do a new tiddler. No, that's it. I don't want that. Um, this is in a different version of TiddlyWiki that's got this little toolbar here. I'll go down to a note. There's a note. Oh, it's an extra the down. Edit it. Copy all the text. Just do it halfway or whatever. Control A. Yeah. And paste it. Okay, and then go up to the top. And um, let's grab this first paragraph. And Click the excision button, which is it's this one. that one. Yep. So excise that text into a title of the text called um, Do It Through Transclusion. And let's excise it to a tiddler called um, um, Tyler. In fact, instead of a transclusion, let's do it through a macro. This is kind of cool. And let's call the macro tag, which is basically the tag macro. And I'll uh, tag the new tiddler with the title of this tiddler. Click that little box and perform the excision. So uh, now stop or close it. And what we, oh, uh, uh, I guess I'll save it with our changes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, save it with our changes. So what we did is we took that text away and replaced it with the tag called Tyler, okay. which is kind of weird. Click on Tyler, um, and there's only one tiddler tag to it, and there it is. So that's an excision. Now, why would you want to do that? That's a whole nother story. Go back up to the top and we'll do it the way that um, might expect to do it more, uh, which is grab the second paragraph. 
um, excise it, and title new tiddler, um, you know, title again, and um, get rid of the macro name. Yeah, do it to a transclusion instead of a tag. Yeah, and uh, perform excision. And so now, save it. From a reader, it looks exactly the same, but from the author, it's in a whole nother killer. The second paragraph there yeah. is actually not there. It's in a tiddler called Tyler, yeah. New Recent. Yeah, and it's Tyler again. Yeah. yeah, that's an excision. Yeah. Let's just go ahead. I, I don't want to like, because this isn't mine. This is someone else's. I just want to. Okay. And no, you can't, so you can't write over it, can you? I can. You can, but I'm able to, but I don't want to. I want to get rid of all the stuff that we just did because this is someone yeah. else's work. But I won't say that somebody else's. Oh, okay. Leaky. Unless you have their pet. Is that a Tiddly Spot password? It's a Dropbox file, right? Okay. You can't write in her Dropbox. Okay. You, so if you close it, it goes away. Okay. Um, unless you, write, you save it. Did you write it after it was in a public Dropbox? Not if it's public, if it's been shared with you as a user. Okay. Right? It has to be shared with you as a user, and that's how you create a small trusted community of users. So, um, oh, time to continue. Okay. Um, so, does that answer your question about the housing excision? Yeah. <laughs> I, we just kind of went with it because it was a cool, kind of different tool. Um, so, um, so go back to Adrian's and let's look at hers and get rid of the stuff. We just, yeah, just go home. Um, just reload it. I have to go a couple minutes. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I hate to see that people end up scraping good ideas because I have no idea what's going wrong or why. You kind of, when that happens, just leave the stuff in your tiddler and say this is a part of the way, but leave it there because if you get rid of it, then well, nobody will be able to help you fix it. Um, so let's look at her. Did you do the stretch? Have you got the stretch text yet, Tyler? Um, whatever week eight is, I think that's the. Uh, so You're on that. Yeah, that's the one that she's responding to here. So go back to Adrian. Let's look at her stretch text. Uh, let's look at stretch text two. The first experiment. Oh, that's one. Yeah, the two. I was like, okay. So, um, I'm not seeing stretched text here. Anyone else seeing it? Let's look at her code. Appear show which still confused me, state equals pop up once. So, yet I'm still fuzzy on macro. So, close that. And where's the text? Now that I understand how plugins which still confuse me, click on which still confuse me. Right here, yeah. There it is. Okay. Mm, okay. That was um. Click on quite helpful, and then click on tiddly winky. Okay. So that's. What do you think of that as an interface? Scroll up a little bit. I can honestly say I don't even know what's going on right now. You don't have any idea what that is. Okay. Really don't. Good. Okay. That would suggest to you that the interface isn't really that helpful. Okay. And I would, the stretch text is pretty weird. I just want to see if we, you know, how we could do it. You, you see stuff like this all the time on the web. She implemented it as a drop down, as a, as a text box. You see this all the time on the web and you, you know what's going on there, right? Yeah. So, so try to get past the way it's being presented and understand the logic, 
I mean, because maybe some we're going to give it to some guy like you to fix the CSS so that it looks pretty and it works. And see how the CSS becomes really important to the design? You can't just like... TiddlyWiki is written by programmers, not designers. So it's like it's going to be pretty weird. But it's easy to fix, so we don't care. We'll just say, Tyler, here, you do this. In fact, you could do this. Well, what is the logic here? What is she doing? So click on which still confused me again. And that is going to hide that text. So it's just an appear. It's like make this text appear. Click, make it hide. It, it actually doesn't make it appear and hide. It just moves it down a little bit. Because, or, yeah, because this part is just being brought down more. That makes sense. Uh, as what, what do you mean does make it appear? Like it's not going anywhere. It's just bringing the text down on the little line. Like, Like that is just being brought down to the mod, and then oh. this is just filling inside of it. Yeah, it's appear. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and so the word appear is sort of a technical term there because it's using the appear macro, but it, the text is showing up, and then it it it, it becomes visible and then un invisible, right? Yeah. So. Could you use the appear macro for your tags for navigation? Maybe. Um, was, That's yeah. I just that yeah. But look, look at her code here, and see how she does this. So, appear show equals, which still confused me. But something. What do you think that show does? What do you think the show means there? It shows the information. Or the text. Yeah. When? Um. When it's clicked. Um, close, but no, just, I'm just wrong. <laughs> Make this look, think of this as a link. How does a link work? Like you click on it and it brings you to another place. Yeah. And what is it? Huh? Jeremy. Hey, Jeremy, how you doing? Hi. We're going to spend, let me close this loop here with uh, Tyler. Don't go away because he's going to get mm -hmm. it before he leaves. No worries. So the appear... And now that Jeremy's here, he's going to correct me when I'm wrong, but I'm just going to make this up. I think I'm right. Appear, I never saw this before. It appears kind of like the opposite of a link in a way, in terms of its structure. With link, you say, make a link, go here, and then you, know, you close the bracket and then put some text in or something or a picture and say, this is what I want to see, and then have a slash link, right? And what I want to see, I'm going to, when I click on the stuff I can see, it's going to take me to the place that I said to go to. Appear here is almost the opposite. Appear, you say, show, this is what I'm going to see. Put something else inside those quotes, which still confuse me. Which one, yes? Uh, and the first appear. Appear, show equals, which still confuse me, but which still confuse Tyler. Okay. And that's what you're going to see when you do nothing. Hit Tyler. Oh, okay. Well, you come back. I'll keep typing. I have to go now. Okay. I'll be back at the 11 o'clock. Okay. So I'm going to keep typing. Okay. And then inside these brackets is what's actually going to show up when you click on it. It's kind of the opposite of a link. Um, and this should work. So it's sort of like a transclusion button. Nah. It's totally a transclusion. But usually your links... Inside those brackets, you, you put the stuff yeah. you're going to see, not, and then inside the angles, you put the stuff you're going to, I mean, between the brackets, you put the stuff you're going to see, and inside the brackets, you put the place you're going to go. Here, inside the brackets, inside the angle brackets, we put the stuff we're going to see, show equals, and then between the angle brackets, we put the stuff that will show up. So can we put more code inside of that to make it do other stuff? I bet you can put anything in here that you want. Um, so that'd be good for navigation through tags and stuff. Have a pop-up menu. I've never tried this before, so we're going to see. Um, I think this will work because I can't imagine why it wouldn't. Um, yeah. Ah, that's very cool. Yes, it is. I okay. <laughs> I'm going to have to jump in. Uh -oh. <laughs> good. Good morning, Jeremy. How are you? Um, very well, thank you. How is everybody? Good. 
So yeah, we're going to get to the stuff that I've set the agenda on, but then we, we ended up here. Yeah, no, but let, I, I can give you a couple of seconds on this because there's a couple of interesting aspects of what you're doing here. Yeah. Um, the Appear widget is not part of the core. It was created by a guy called Toby Beer. Who, yeah. Tobias Beer, who from Austria, who is one of the most productive um, members of the TiddlyWiki community, according to lots of measures. Um, now, the, he introduced the appear widget to solve a very specific internal problem. Sure. And the problem is with um, a very conventional idiom within TiddlyWiki, which is to use a button widget and a reveal widget together to make a slider. Now, in fact, what you're demonstrating here could be constructed with a button widget and a reveal widget. Yeah. And I would recommend that you do it that way because, uh, I, I mean, I think I'm reflecting what a, how a lot of people work, which is to try to use the core functionality where you can. Now, the, what the appear, macro, the appear widget can do, which you're not an, a, a facility which I think you're not exercising here, is make it so that the text that appears appears somewhere else in the DOM tree. So you can kind of, it combines the idea of this, um, the conventional button and reveal widgets, which together can give us an item of text which you can switch off and on, along with this new idea of injecting that content somewhere else in the tree. Um, and so I don't think you're using that here. You've got the button and the, and the item in line. The thing that just vaguely crossed my mind as being interesting about this is we, we, we touch from time to time on TiddlyWiki's nature as an open source project and how that has changed its development you know, compared to if it was an academic project or a commercial project or you know, an, a, a, anything else. Um, and one of the most interesting things that consistently happens is that contributors, people like Tobias and frequently Tobias himself, do things that I have um, previously regarded as impossible. <laughs> and I mean impossible, you know, in that blustery tone of voice, as in impossible at first sight, because when one first peeks over the edge of the precipice, there's such horrendous complexity and fire that you, you, know, that you, that you back away. Um, and you may remember from an earlier talk that the ability for TiddlyWiki in its standalone configuration which you're using here the ability for it to save within the browser was itself something that i thought was impossible a community lots of people were asking for it and it wasn't until a community member showed how it could be done um, that i realized you know the, the little um intellectual leap to get it all working um, so it's one of the most amazing things about um about working in open source and and i suspect you might be able to um make a make a comparison with how the same sort of thing happens in in academia it's as if me as you know from my perspective um sometimes the actions of others provoke the best work i think <laughs> I think is what it comes down to. Yeah, it's just a little bit. Yes, it's but there's the there's the whole other well, whole openness that would be another concept. But um, yeah, and, and I, I I realized as soon as we were doing this that we could do this with buttons and 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 um, and I think that's also a good lesson to to try to focus in on the core if you can because that's what's going to work. <laughs> that's going to work. Appear will work and then it will break in a couple of years. That's the risk. That's the, that that's the risk and. I, I must say, in TiddlyWiki Classic land, um, where I, you know, I don't have time to do much work, the old version of TiddlyWiki, um, you do see people um, you know, kind of suffering from this problem. They've fallen into reliance on a, on a component that doesn't actually do that much, um, but has introduced a complexity for them and then ended up being the thing that breaks things. Yes, I suffer from that all the time in the classic world. It's a good, it's a good thing to bring back to, to remember. Appear is just a macro that you're using, and so if you put a lot of pressure on it, yeah. But it's uh, as I say, it's exactly the kind of thing that um, I love about the involvement of Tobias and others. Is this sort of, you know, there's in open source projects there is this this idea of somebody being in charge. Um, but um, uh, this kind of situation, 
really undermines conventional notions of who's in charge. And I obviously I adore that. It makes it much more fun. So I um, highlighted this. I, I think nah. you're the screen here. I, I couldn't resist. <laughs> the highlight, I think this is uh, Adrian's project here. Why can't more programs be as cut and dry as Tiddly Wiki? And I, I don't think I ever thought I'd see the day when I saw that as a student comment. I'd love to, um, I'd love Adrian to expand that. That's a really interesting thought. Yeah, because of, of all the things that it is, cut and dry is not one of them that I would, wouldn't be the first hundred words I'd use to describe Tiddly Wiki. Do you, um, uh, could, could we take even, even more of the time that you have planned to, to sure. me to ask you a question, which is, um, in the, now we're in, I don't know what week of the course, 12 or something? Oh, 12 or something. There's about three yeah. left. I start counting them backwards now. Um, do you think, um, I mean, it's not really a question for you so much as the students, I think. Um, but to what degree has the project or has the work, so the course so far, um, successfully indoctrinated them. You know, do they still? How many of them are still feeling that Tiddlywicky is? Uh, you know, I mean, the classic feedback: um, um, strange and uh, unusual. And how many of them, as maybe Adrian is, are starting to sort of have been seduced by the inner logic? Well, what I'm going to do to get at that is invite and request once the tagging exercise, which goes up in the next day or two or three. The, the remainder of the semester is about two weeks left. Will be more reflective back to Tiddly Wiki, um, and trying to develop. I think to answer both the question that you just asked. Yeah. So, what do you think of Tiddly Wiki, kind of thing? And what do you think of hypertext? I guess the bigger question. And then, well, and then the other question is: Is there? Do you see how Tiddly Wiki, the work that we've done in Tiddly Wiki? Um, generates understanding that could be applied outside of Tiddly Wiki and other development design platforms? Um, because if, it, if the answer is no, then, then that's something yeah. I want to address. If the answer is yes, then I'd consider it a success. Yeah. Because I, I think that Tiddly Wiki, we talked about this in, in last summer, I think, is that it's the perfect platform to teach these concepts. Not, not perfect. I didn't, it's the best platform I've found to teach these concepts in a way that's accessible to the most people. Um, so it, it captures the coders a little bit. It captures the non-coders. It it, it it just allows you to work through all these concepts yeah. and actually make things happen. How, how um, hands-on does this course, or uh, how does the hands-on-ness of this course compare to other courses at SUNY, I mean? Um, because so, you've got everybody making stuff. I mean, you've got everybody. Well, uh, this course sits inside of two programs. So it's both an undergrad and grad course. And the undergraduate program is communication information design. And um, here, James, you guys are both in that. Um, I'd say most of the courses in the major, at least half of the courses in the major would qualify like this. Is what I think of as a studio course where you're making stuff. Is that about right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. More than half? Almost all of it, because yeah. you're really designing something. Yeah, so in the, in the, well, not your, not, maybe not, depends on how they're taught, but not the comp theory class, perhaps. No. I don't know how Ryan teaches it. Um, there are projects. Hmm? There are projects. There are projects where you build. Yeah, so he's doing, yeah. Um, so at least in our major, many of our major courses, which accounts for 45 out of 125 credits, most students take up to 60 credits, so half of them. Uh, and then in the graduate program, um, there's a lot of making as well. So in the rest of the college, not whether well, there's engineering, you know, they do in the other majors, not so much, perhaps like sociology. I don't think they make stuff so much. But um, it's great for me. Um, yeah. uh, you know, um, and the, there's lots of artifacts to look at, um, which do tell a very rich story. Um, yeah, no, I think it's been really interesting. So one of the things I'm going to, I'm actually think I'm going to play here in Adrian's um, 